Today we're going to demonstrate how to create a simple weave pattern using some of the new tools in Pictoweave, namely the autofill function. This function was designed for in cases uh, like weaving names or simple cartoon characters with uh, clearly defined uh, in a small number of colors. Um, in order to use it we need a bitmap image um, from which to draw our weave pattern. So the simplest way to create something like a name is simply to go to Microsoft Paint. Um, we'll just stretch out our image size here so we've got something nice and large. Select our text tool and if we go to view text toolbar um, we can select our types of, of um, fonts and so forth. So we've selected a, um, a nice script font. So just type my name in and stretch it out a bit there. Okay, we can close our toolbar down. And we'll just oops. okay. I'll just select that and I'll just move it up into the corner there. You want basically nothing outside of the weave that's not going to be used. And then we can shrink our file size down like so. And then we just save that as a bitmap image. It has to be a bitmap image. We can't use a JPEG with this particular function. And so now we have a file saved, we can go across to pick to weave. Now before we start, we'll set up our weave sizes and so forth as normal. Um, in this case I'm going to use a plain A thread for our uh, weave thread. And I'll use an NCP C thread for our wrap thread. Typically the wrap thread will always be a larger thread than your weave thread. Okay, so once I've got those two set up, uh, I'll just change my background colour to a, uh, a different colour. Now we can go to Tools and start our Autofill function. Uh, and here we see our automatic grid painting utility. So before we open our image, we need to put in a few uh, details of uh, our rod and so forth. Um, down here we select the diameter of the rod where the weave is going to go and uh, we'll select a diameter of 16 millimeters, which will be something like it'll be up around the uh, um, the butt end of the rod and we can select how far around the rod this particular weave will go we don't want it too big in this case with a name weave because you would have to rotate the weave in order to see it um, but we don't want it too small either so we can see in this case to, to go 45 degrees either side of zero, we're going to have a row count of 51, which is a reasonable size weave. The more threads in a weave, the more definition you can get. So if you're using a highly uh, complex font, uh, you may be better off going to a, to a larger thread count in order to get the definition you want. Um, as we increase the thread count, you can see that the angle around the rod. Uh, so we might go up to say 65 threads for this particular one and we can see it's not too big on the weave. You'll be able to see it looking down on top of it. So we'll open that uh, particular bitmap. So there's our background image open with uh, my name on it. Uh, we'll use this to create our weave pattern from. Now in a simple two color image like this uh, there's really only uh, one thread color and a background color. Now we don't want the background color to become part of the image. Uh, the way this utility works is it examines this bitmap and it chooses each color and matches it to the thread that you've selected 
uh, for your palette down here or it picks the closest one in the in the colors in your palette at the moment we have no colors selected so if we were to allow it to include this background color we would want to fill in that with a thread and that's not what we want we want the background color to be wrap threads uh, that is the threads that rotate around your rod and we want the parts where we actually want the weave to be to be design threads the threads that run parallel to your, your uh, blank so in order to exclude any colors we simply hold our cursor over the colors that we don't want in the weave and click on them and you'll see down here uh, those colors will be excluded as they get to them if we want to include a color we simply hold our cursor over that color and press the F3 key and you can see that in our palette list here that thread has been selected if we had numerous thread uh, numerous colors um, which I'll go through in a moment on more complicated weave we'd simply go through and select as many colors as, as we choose uh, and they will be included in our palette so we've got our background color excluded we've got our foreground color that we want included if there's any other little shades and so forth it's best to include them now and then we can convert them all to a single color windows when it draws images tends to have some amount of shading no matter what if we only choose uh, uh, one color in our drawing like we did in this you'll tend to get a little bit of shading around the edges um, we can't do that with thread and, and still have a manageable weave so it's best to include those colors now and we can convert them all to one color later so we'll press our process button now uh, and now we simply wait for a few moments whilst picture weave examines our bitmap um, pixel by pixel and then chooses the nearest color in our palette to that particular pixel and includes that uh, on our left list so we'll wait for a few moments and then we'll come back to see our finished product okay so now our uh, processing is finished we can simply close our window and we can see our weave pattern has been uh, fairly well filled in we'll just take this back up to 100% uh, what we can now do is to load our uh, background image in behind here just to see if we can uh, touch up any any areas before we create our left list you'll notice that because of the um, the requirement to shrink the image down we've got a bit of a uh, an area here where on our original bitmap there was actually a gap there and it's uh, it's shown up with a few threads here that, um, that we need to get rid of so we can just click on those to remove them okay and now we can see by scaling back again we can see where we need to um, fill in just to get somewhat like our original so it's simply a matter of just touching up a few spots until you're happy with the results there um, we can remove our background again apply our fill color and we'll just have a quick preview there and that will be our finished name way 